Hi guys. I know it's been a couple days, um, but <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood to do a video diary when my husband was home. I just kind of wanted to spend that time with him. So, oh, my nose. My nose is itchy. I wanted to spend that, that time with him and I didn't really want to be distracted with um, like having to film and do this and that. And so I devoted most of my time and attention to him. I was still able to put up some Instagram posts and stuff like that, but um, I gave him a lot of my time and attention on Sunday, especially. Um, Saturday, I didn't film because I worked. So I had to be out of the house by 9.45 and um, I wanted to spend that morning with him and make breakfast, so that's what we did. <laughs> so yeah, no video diaries for those two days. Um, so I'm here in my kitchen, obviously, and I'm painting my nails because the gray polish that I had totally started to chip and peel um, and I need something on my nails because I can't stand looking at the at the yellow stain. Um, I can't wait till it's grown out. I just feel like it's so nasty. I think part of the yellow stain too was from that like neon yellowy green polish that I had bought back in the summer, like a couple months ago. And um, it was really harsh on the nails and it was quite a disappointment too because I thought it was gonna be like real neon looking and it was just a weird kind of a polish. So <laughs> I was kind of disappointed in it. And I think that that actually participated in the staining of my nails. So while I wait for the new fresh nail to grow completely out, I just need to constantly have something on these nails. So I'm going with this color. It's called, let's see if I can find the, the oh. Oh boy, I think this is like desert something. The little sticker is all peeling. <laughs> it's like desert something, but it's like a, like a greeny color, but it has kind of a sheen to it. So it's kind of pretty. Um, so anyways, I'm just, I'm just gonna have that on my nails till I repaint them because I want fresh polish on my nails for my husband's graduation. So <laughs> I figured I will paint them Wednesday morning or Tuesday. So that they'll be fresh for Wednesday. Um, but yeah, and I'll probably have to bring the bottle with me because chances are it's going to chip. Like it's just real cheap polish. And I put the clear coat on top of it and it's still chipped. So I mean, there ain't nothing like getting your nails done and you know, <laughs> like that's one thing I miss about getting my nails done is that I would never have this problem because I would do the gel nails and all that stuff. So that's kind of the downfall of doing my own nails, but oh well. <laughs> I just can't see spending that much money right now at least. Um, and then my nails have been growing and they're like, so strong like I had paper nails you guys when I got my fake ones pulled off I mean it ruins your nails anyway but my nails were so thin like I could bend them like paper and I was just like oh my gosh like I'll never put fake nails on them again because it ruined them and I haven't had fake nails on for like probably going on two and a half years now Maybe two, three, I don't know. Maybe it's been like, yeah, it's about, it's been two years. Um, but <laughs> I do miss it, I will say, but I just, I can't see myself doing that to my nails again as much as I want to get them done. So I'm hoping that I can continue strengthening these nails and um, grow them out and just like enjoy having natural long nails. I do still have the, the problem where they peel at the tip, so that's a little annoying, but I'll take it. I'll take that over paper, papery nails. <laughs> um, so anyways, you guys, everybody's been sending me happy autumn posts today. It's so sweet. Um, so definitely we are 
in the season change. And also, um, we're now in the season of Libra. So we left Virgo and we're in Libra season now. So those of you who are Libras, happy birthday to you. And this is your season now, time for you guys to shine. Um, I'm not too familiar with the Libra energy from the Zodiac, but from what my very limited astrology studies, <laughs> um, Libra is a sign of, um, to me, Libras are the people that want peace and, and, and serenity and with everybody. They, they kind of are like very neutral type people. Um, I always see Libras as people who, who are very indecisive people. Um, who bounce back and forth. Um, but I have also known people who are Libras and they've always been very like proactive about, you know, the environment and proactive about the well-being of, of the wor world and the community. And so they're very like selfless people in my opinion. Um, but I also see them as indecisive and like they have a really hard time establishing their final decision. So I do see Libras as having um, issues with that. Ooh, is this, kind of, this is kind of pretty. I think I could dig it for a day or two. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, but it's cool. It's cool to see this, this season change and to see, to see this, literally the Zodiac change too. Um, but yeah, you guys, it's been a, it's gonna be a nice, I think it's gonna be a nice fall season. Like. I don't know about you, but we're already experiencing weather changes here in California. So we don't get much of a fall. Like we don't, we don't see the fall like you do in, on the East Coast. Like I, I only know what it's like on the East Coast because when I went to visit my sister a few years back, um, I went in October and I literally saw when I, I remember when I first got to her house, um, her tree, the tree in her front yard was like full of leaves um, and it was orange, like orange leaves and just like, but not just orange, like it was bright reds, orange and yellows. Like it just looked gorgeous, like on fire. And then I stayed, I think I stayed with her for about a week. And then um, I remember when I left our last day when we were leaving, I looked at her tree and all of the leaves were on the grass. Like they had all fallen. She had no leaves left on her tree. So I literally was like, I seriously saw fall when I was at her house. Um, I remember like when my husband and I were driving around to just explore the East Coast, um, I just couldn't get over the beauty of all of the fall leaves, all of the colors, it's, it was cold. It just was like everything that you see in the movies when it, when they depict fall, that's how it was. That's how it felt. Like that was my experience out there. Um, and I was so jealous because we don't get that in, um, here in California. So, um, I grew up in the suburbs and when it was fall, it was cold. You know, we would have the, that chilly wind, that chilly wind chill in the morning and you know, but it was sometimes still too warm to step out into a nice jacket or a sweater and a scarf or whatever until about maybe November. So, you know, I didn't really, you know, by the time it's November, fall is pretty much over and you're sliding into, into winter. So that's kind of how it is here in California. It's like you get a winter and you get a summer and then like everything else in between that is pretty warm. So it's it's nice for those of you who really like the warm weathers, but if you really embrace fall, um, I guarantee you that if you've never been on the East Coast, you've got to go to see their fall season. Like it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and I will never forget that experience. <laughs> And it, like I said, it made me jealous. It made me wish that I, you know, lived over there so I could experience that every season. Um, but <laughs> I just, I will never forget that. I will never forget that. It was so beautiful. And um, it just looked like a, like a movie. It was ridiculous. Like how beautiful, <laughs> how beautiful it was. So yeah. But, you know, aside from that though, like you can't, you can't, you can't completely knock California. Like California still has really nice weather. So 
I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me just do the last of this. I'm gonna be making breakfast after, once my nails dry. I think I'm gonna make some eggs. I think I'll scramble some eggs, I don't know. We'll see. This, yeah, this color is pretty. It's like a, like a golden green. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I just remember that it was called Desert Something. It's um, Color Craze Nail Polish. I got this one at the Dollar Tree. Uh, sorry guys, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't say. And then this is a, I think this is also color crazed. Yeah, no, this is LA Colors. Um, the clear polish, so that's why I'm gonna put a top coat on my nails yeah so um what else what else do I want to talk about um so I had one of my friends did a tarot reading for me and I know you watch my channel so thank you girl I have to text you I was gonna text you last night but it was too late and I didn't want to text you too late like I didn't want to be a nuisance so I'll text you probably after I'm done filming this but um, I watched the video that you did for me the reading I really really enjoyed it I really liked it I really got a lot out of it um, but basically I had a friend um, who read for me and I was asking them for some insight on going full-time with cackling moon and <clears throat> You know, just like the energies of that, what would happen, what, what does it look like? Let me move over to the other side. Let's move you guys over. Um, so I wanted insight on like, what to expect? What would happen? What does the decision look like for that, that, that whole thing? I need to bring my little box. <laughs> Cause I stand you guys on a box so that I could film. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, I wanted like the energies of, the idea of me taking Cackling Moon full time and all of that. So that's what she did. And um, basically it was like, I would have, <laughs> it I would be stuck in my head a lot about like the worries and the fears of not you know being financially stable or walking away from a job that brings me a stable paycheck you know um and those are all mentalities that i have to sort through if i want to do this like if i really want to take that leap so i was actually having this conversation with my husband the other day when he was here and i was telling him that i'm nervous to I am that I'm nervous to take that leap, you know, because what if I need the library job later or what if I miss it or whatever. And the only thing that that makes it hard for me to say, oh, I'll stick around longer is the commute. If I didn't have to commute so far for work, I probably would just stick with it. Like I would probably just keep it because an extra paycheck and that paycheck just being nothing but fun money <laughs> or money to go in the savings account is nice. Um, but <laughs> I am spending a lot of money a month on gas, just driving. Um, so it kind of like, it's kind of not worth it at times anymore when I like think about it. Um, when we're, when we're at the point where like, literally we won't need my paycheck to pay the bills, you know, my husband's income will cover it all. Basically when we're at the point where I won't need my paycheck to, to survive, we won't need it. Um, 
we'll be good, you know? So <laughs> we're gonna be at that point literally in August. I mean, August, oh my God, August. <laughs> we're gonna be at that point in October um, because that's when he graduates. And when he graduates, he slides into his next um, step in paying from a, a cadet to an officer. And so, um, you know, his next step of pay will be more. And it's just, it'll put us in a place where we'll be more comfortable financially, where basically we're gonna test it out to see, like even though I'm still gonna be working, we're gonna see how living off of just his income would feel like. So I pretty much told him like, I wanna act as if my library paycheck doesn't exist and we're, we're, we're gonna solely like pay the mortgage and pay all of the bills with your check and um, we'll see how much we have left over and then like, you know, groceries and all of that and then see how it feels, you know? And because basically that's what's, that's what's going to happen if I do take the leap to leave the library job. Um, the li leaving the library job though, isn't going to happen for at least six months. Um, because he has to, you know, get through a probation period. So, <laughs> so definitely like it's not going to happen anytime soon, but sometime next year, if I do decide to take the leap, it will happen. Um, but that's an if it's a big if right now. I still don't know. I, I have this dream of wanting to just do my readings and do cackling moon and be a blogger and be a YouTuber and be like just invested in all of that stuff with cackling moon full time. Like that's my dream. Like that's, that's how I envisioned it since like the very beginning when I first started my journey. Um, but <laughs> will I get to that point? I don't know um, because I'm so afraid. I've always worked. I've been working since I was 15 um, and I'm now 33. I have always had the paycheck, you know? And granted, like I've, I've never like made a lot of money to the point where it was like I could survive on my own income, that kind of thing. No, I've always had like, my husband was there, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, but the fact that is like the freedom of, of not having like the financial, the need to be supporting from my portion of the paycheck, like it's kind of nice to think about that. You know, it's nice to think like, oh, I'm not gonna have to, um, like my pay paycheck isn't going to be drained for, you know, paying off the bills and this and that. Like I can use this paycheck to put it in our savings account. I could use it to pay off some of the debt we've accrued. Cause so we paid off all of our debt before we moved into our house. And then my husband took off for the academy in March. So from March through now, he, we've accrued a slight debt, you know, not, not nothing nowhere near as much as what we had before. Um, but we had zero on our credit cards going into this experience. And then now that he's graduating, we have a little bit of debt on the on the credit cards and it's because the academy expenses he had to pay for his uniforms he had to pay for um the dry cleaning for every, every week that he would you know get his his uniforms dry cleaned and all of that so there was that little tab um he's been using his credit card to pay for the gas when he's driving up and down back and forth to the academy because that's a tax write off so <laughs> and instead of making it confusing, it's like, I just told him, you know what? It's easier to just put it all on one card. Just use that credit card, that, that particular credit card for all of your academy expenses so that when we do our taxes, we have it all printed out. We have everything. We have all the receipts, but we have it all printed out in just one, one account. <laughs> it just makes it easier. Um, and then my credit card has a little bit of a balance on it because of um, Luna's vet stuff. And then I had to get my car fixed. And then I had um, just a couple, a couple odds and ends happen. I had to pay for my flight to go up there for his graduation. I had to pay for a three, three nights at a hotel up there for the graduation week. So it was expensive. It's been expensive. And um, <laughs> when you have a zero debt, like when you like when literally your credit cards are zeroed out after spending like two years paying off your, your debt, it sucks to have to see some money floating around on, on, on it, having a balance. But that's life. That's why we have credit cards so that we can use it 
in emergencies or use it when we need to. And so I'm glad I'm grateful that we have that, but I want to get it paid off again because I don't like, I don't like having a balance on my credit card once I've experienced having zero debt and not having to make a credit card payment. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's my goal is um, once we're surviving off of his check, um, my library paycheck, I'm just going to use it to start paying off that credit card debt and then eventually putting it into the savings account. So saving money because I have found um, I've only been a homeowner for this is we're going on month 10 um, that <laughs> I've only been a homeowner for not even a year, um, but I have experienced like it's so comforting to have a savings account, like to have money in the savings and to know that if shit hits the fan and if, if like the toilet were needs to be on like something where it happened with the plumbing or God forbid if the air conditioning went out or whatever, um, that we had the money sitting there to use it, you know? So I've learned having a savings is a very important and it's so comforting, but <laughs> I had to use some of that savings um, when shit hit the fan. So like when stuff started happening with my car and then with Luna and her vet bills and so it's just, I was trying to pay everything off as soon as I was charging it. And I realized I should have just let the, I should have just let the, the debt start to pile up a little bit on the credit card rather than trying to zero it out right away. Because then I probably would have still had some money in my savings so it kind of sucks. Like I've slowly been starting to put money away in my savings again, but it's, it's nothing like it was before. So, <laughs> so I told my husband, like, if I do take off from, if I do leave the library job, um, I want to make sure that we are zeroed out on our credit cards and that we have money in our savings account because I just don't want to like take off when we have, you know, open odds and ends that we need to clear up. So that's just my mindset. I mean, everybody is different with how you guys handle your finances. That's just the way I want to be. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've been really heavily thinking about the whole, do I want to go full time with Kathleen Moon? Do I want to still work? And I, you know, easy answer is I want to work from home. Like who wouldn't want to work from home? You know, unless you're just like one of those people where you love to be out and you love to socialize and you love to be like with people and, and you know, which I do. I love the, that aspect of my job because I do get to see my friends. I do get to see, you know, hang out with my coworkers and laugh and this and that. But with a 56, 60 mile, let's just say 60 mile um, trip, one way, <laughs> 60 miles. So 120 mile round trip to go to work for a six hour shift because it's part-time job. So I work a maximum of six hours a day. Um, I, I don't work anything less than, uh, four hours is the minimum. I will never, I won't work anything less than four hours. Um, even that four hours is a pain to think, oh my God, I have to drive 120 miles round trip for a four hour shift. Mm. So part of me is like, Ugh. but for the most part, my shifts are six hours. Um, it's just, it just doesn't seem feasible anymore. And my husband and I are for sure gonna be staying here in this house for at least a couple years until we start building some money on it, you know? And then we'll we'll talk about moving later, but I've moved so much in the last couple years, like moving into the apartment, moving out of the apartment, moving into my parents' house, moving out of my parents' house. It's just a lot. <laughs> And so the idea of being able to stay put and actually make this a home, like now that he's going to be home again, we're going to finally, you'll start seeing like furniture pop up around because <laughs> I didn't do anything to the house while I, while I've been staying here without him because it's like, I need his input. So, um, I'm just looking forward to making this more of a home. And then I know this isn't going to be our forever home. Like there will be another place, but not for at least another few years. And so in that meantime, it's like, do I really want to commute 120 mile round trip to work and spend like, I want to say you guys, like I probably spend, depending on how many trips I'm, we're doing up and down the hill, if it's just me, I want to say I'm spending about 
and it also depends on the car that I'm using. So when I was using my, my car, it, the gasoline wasn't as expensive, but I was filling up a little bit more because, <laughs> cause it, you know, the gas tank was smaller, but I've been um, using my mom's car and it is a bigger gas tank. And so, yeah, it costs a little bit more to fill up. Um, so I would say about a, for a month's worth, I'm probably spending three to $400 on gas. Like not kidding you. Um, Probably more so around 300, 350 is usually like where I'm, I'm at right now. But if my husband is like, if my husband, if we're making like an extra trip down the hill or, you know, if my husband is using our gas card to fill up his car, like I said, he's been using, he's been putting it on his credit card, but there were times where he was filling up with his car too. Oh my God. Like I want to say one month, I think it was July, our gas, our, literally you guys, like our gas the gas card, the bill was almost $600 for the month. It was ridiculous. That's a lot of fucking money for gas. Um, and <laughs> it's probably going to blow your guys' mind, but you guys also have to, to figure, like, I live in California where it's fucking expensive here. Um, so gasoline right now, I think, I think the last time I filled up, we filled up on Sunday, yesterday. Um, I think it was $380. <coughs> I think it was 380 for gas and it just also it depends too because where I live um, there's certain gas stations like I'll go to, there's one gas station I'll go to because it tends to be cheaper but because you, you have to you drive a little bit inland more um, but a lot of the gas stations that are like right off the freeway they know that a lot of these people that are driving this highway, this freeway, are going to Vegas. And so you gotta gas up when you're driving to Vegas, you know? <laughs> so they jack up the prices. That's just how it is. Um, and so when we filled up, we did, we filled up on one of those, those gas stations because we had no choice. We were like, I knew we needed to fill up, you know? And so I was like, oh, well, rather than driving all the way across town, let's just fill up here. Who gives a fuck? So, so we did. <clears throat> I don't know how much gas is in other states. Sometimes I ask my sister because she lives in um in another state on the East Coast, and um she'll tell me like what her gas prices are, and it's it's always significantly cheaper. But oh my god, I can't open this now. I hate when I can't. <sighs> you know, like when the oh there it goes when it gets stuck. Um. So her gas has always been significantly cheaper than ours here in California, but still, it's still pricey. I mean, I think it's just pricey no matter what. <laughs> um, but yeah, so gas here is definitely, it's definitely no, I haven't seen it cheaper than $340. We'll just put it that way, since, since I've been living up here. Um, but yeah, so I spent a lot of money on gas, you guys, a lot. And it's it was a shock factor too, and it was something I knew. Like when we lived, when we moved into this house, I knew I was gonna be driving long distance, that I was gonna be, you know, that our gas bill was gonna be significantly higher, literally doubled, probably even tripled at times. Um, because I went from, literally I lived 10, 10 minutes, probably 10 minutes away from my job when we were living um, with my parents to now I literally have a good 50 minute commute without traffic. And if there is traffic, then I've, I've, I've sat in traffic for two hours just to get home. I'm not kidding you. So it does suck. That part sucks. So that's why I'm like, how long how much longer can i take this commute you know and, and we have friends who commute who have been commuting for years up and down up and down and and, and for some reason they're, they're okay with it but for me i'm like if i don't need to do it i'm not going to do it anymore <laughs> and so that's pretty much what's been motivating me aside from like the whole idea of how amazing it will be to work full time with cackling moon but that's really what's been motivating me to um, to want to make the jump from working for a steady paycheck, you know, to going literally rogue. Like it's going rogue. It, it's a little scary, but I have to keep reminding myself that if we can survive with just my husband's income, then it's okay. Like it's okay to take that leap. You know, we're not going to drown 
and it's okay, but I think I, it's hard for me to get out of that headset, that, ha that mindset, because I'm so used to always working and I'm so used to my paycheck being a significant portion to our finances. And so I guess it's like out of habit, you know, but now it's like, oh, I, it's not gonna matter as much anymore. And so when I can like get myself to, to believe that and to think that, and to accept it, then it's kind of like, okay, it's not gonna be as bad, you know? It's not gonna be that bad. So it is what it is, it's, it's crazy, but <laughs> you know, I have a lot of thinking to do. I have, a lot, I have a lot of stuff to plan and a lot of like, just I have a lot on my mind about this whole thing. And I feel like I'm not gonna be 100% comfortable with it. Look at, look at how the nails came out, look. Isn't that pretty, you guys? Um, I'm not going to be 100% comfortable until I see what life is like living solely on my husband's income. So the month of October is going to be a little weird because he's going to have like that transition. So like he'll have one week at the, at the rate of pay he's at right now. And then he has 10 days free, which is like their break. <laughs> and then on the 14th, he starts, boom, he starts, you know, his next income. So October's like October's pay, like November 1st when we get October's pay is going to be a little weird. So we may not be able to fully see this full effect until December because no, the month of November would be full blown like his income, his salary. So, and it's crazy you guys, because we're only going to be getting paid once a month. We've only been getting paid once a month with his income. Like once a month. I, we're not, I'm not used to that. I'm used to every two weeks. <laughs> so I get paid every two weeks, but he gets paid once a month, lump sum. You, you just get this big chunk of money at the beginning of the month. And then it's like, it's up to you to budget and like put some away and this and that. So I've been watching YouTube videos about people who give tips on how they like deal with their money. And it's so creative. Some of these people have amazing ideas. So I'm, I'm kind of like working that part out because I told my husband like w one of the first things that I do when, when, when I get his money, like his income when it comes in <coughs> with mine is, well, okay, with my check when it first comes in is like I pay all the bills that needs to get, that need to get paid for that, for that paycheck. So I already have it listed in my, my organized little book, my bill pay, my bill journal. <laughs> um... So I know like like this week, um, I get paid on Wednesday. So I know this paycheck coming in on Wednesday is gonna cover da 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 like those bills. And then when my husband's check comes in at the end of the month, or it usually like, because we're, we're with a credit union, so it usually gets, it usually comes into our account like a couple days before the first. Um, so as soon as it comes in, I pay, like the first thing I do is just pay the mortgage. Like bam, okay, that chunk of money is done. Like that's paid for because that's the most important thing. And then my paycheck pays all the little bills and stuff. And then whatever he has left over, it's like, okay, I, you know, him and I have a joint account. So I'm like, how much money do you want for yourself? And then this is what I'm putting in the savings account. So it's just easier for me to throw whatever we don't need right now in the savings because then we're not tempted to touch it. Like that's been my lesson. Some people are really good with just having all of their money in their checking account <laughs> and they don't touch it. But I've been prone to being like, oh, it's there, I'm gonna use it kind of person. And so I have to force myself to throw it in the savings. And the only time I'm doing transfers from the savings to my checking is when I really need it because I'm only allowed six transfers a month. So it, it kind of keeps me in control, it keeps me in check. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys, if this video was boring <laughs> or talking finances, if it was like, too much or whatever but I just I love talking about this stuff because I have I have a whole new appreciation for being organized and like dealing with money and all this stuff since I've like had to you know do all that and so I have my own little tips and tricks on how I do it and I love watching like I said I love watching YouTube videos of these people who they how they how do they manage their money for the month and getting paid once a month has been it's been a big change, like, that's been a big thing. <laughs> when you're used to getting it every two weeks, it's a big deal. So now I'm kind of used to it, but when I first, when we first started getting his check once a month, I was like, 
oh my God, like we can't fuck this up because if we do, then we're really going to be hurting for like the next half of the month until you get paid again. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a learning, a learning curve, like a learning streak for us, but we're, we're doing good. So, so yeah, you guys, um, cackling moon is still going to be around. I just don't know if I'm going to do it full time or not how long is it gonna take for me to go full-time and then when I do go full-time full you guys like this is a whole nother video but when I do go full-time I totally want to do more blogs and stuff on my website I just want my website to become the sole source of cackling moon versus like my Instagram account like right now my Instagram is probably the most active account for cackling moon and aside from YouTube but I really want to like do more with the website so because I pay for it every month you know so, so yeah, anyways, we're 35 minutes in and it's 840 and I think it's now time for breakfast. Like I didn't want to eat breakfast too early because then I'm just like not hungry for it, but now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and upload this and then I will post it as soon as it's ready. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching and, um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye loves.